which I never, I'm never mean to you. That's You're the, never mean that's to me. That's the dumbest thing. I think that in, in all of our life that you do, that's the craziest thing you do. Oh, that I go and read for that people you to read be mean about me. Comments. It'd be like if 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 I woke up in the morning, like who hates me? Who does who disagrees? And I'm gonna go and find out what they say about it's me. The, it's the it, <laughs> it's so dumb, isn't it? Well, I'll talk to my therapist. I love about you it next desperately. Week. Sorry, but hey, go, going back. So give me some stuff, Blake, because you you do a great job of this. What are some just for our people? Don't go what, and read comments. What are some on things? Well, that, media. That, that's a great example of what not to do. Um, I know that's the clip they're going to use right I there. I know, it. Um, oh. but. Um, Welcome to the Purpose Podcast. My name is Rachel, and I'm here with my husband, Zach, and our great friend, Blake. And we are so grateful that you've taken a couple of minutes to grow yourself and really just zone in on your purpose, which we believe is to win the world that God has set you apart to go and be sent, as Mm -hmm. we talked about last week. And so make sure before we get started that you like and you subscribe to the podcast. You can rate us five stars if you're on Apple Podcast. And if you're on our YouTube, we'd love for you to comment. Um, Just share with us if you like our color on the background Uh today. Mm -hmm. Actually, here's what we're going to do. Blake, uh, who's who's with us, is a huge movie buff. And so what I want you to – and I'm going to ask you this question, Blake, so be prepared. What is the most quotable movie? We don't have enough time. What's the elf. most quotable movie? You going with Elf? I'm going with Elf. Elf. You say quick. so many things from Elf. Elf. Elf is quality. There's a. I think it's a. I think it's a Bible documentary. It's called Hot Rod. Uh, <laughs> that is very. That's a quality film. Very quotable. Is it? Good? I don't even know if you can make that kind of decision off the cuff like that. What's the most I quote, could, what's the most quotable movie? I could, but it shows that you know this was you know before Jesus. Okay. It's Step Brothers. Step Brothers. Hands, Hands down. down. We would have so much Hands more room down. for activities. Correct. Quality <laughs> film. Again, we don't condone it, but uh, we have seen it. So either way. But uh, mm-hmm. so feel free to comment what you think the most quotable movie is. And don't uh, forget, the podcast is available on all platforms. So when you share it today, you can share it on your favorite platform. Why do you have your infomercial voice on? <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't want to forget. When we do these podcasts, it seems like either Rachel or myself is in a real weird mood. Today is Rachel's weird mood day, okay? so I'm in a weird um, mood. So, but hey, the last two podcasts, we've been pressing to something that uh, is very near and dear to our hearts. Uh, more importantly, it's near and dear to God's heart. And uh, But it is the most one of, if I would say, the most challenging things for believers to do, which is to share their faith. And mm-hmm. leading up to Easter, uh, we do want to invite people to church and do all that kind of stuff, but we want to be bold. And even in this time, encourage you, this is a time, like all times until Jesus comes back, this is a time for you to share your faith. Um, if you missed our, our last podcast, we introduced Blake a little bit more, heard more of his testimony. But today, what we want to specifically talk about is fight the pressures of life and go out. So talk. we want to talk spe- specifically today about the pressures we feel that are suppressing our either our desire or our willingness to share the gospel and pushing past those. We'll talk about some ways to push past those, but just for vulnerability and transparency's sake, what are some of the pressures that you guys fight? And it could be consciously or subconsciously. What are some of the pressures that are fighting you back from being evangelist and going out and sharing your faith? Well, for me, the pressure is constantly is, uh, am I going to make somebody upset when I share my faith? Like So it's like I, I'm a natural kind of people pleaser, and uh, if I have friends, I love to make people laugh and make people feel good. And the gospel is a pretty hard line. Like when you share the the good news of Jesus, you're really kind of whether you realize it or not, you're forcing someone to kind of make a decision. Like because right. like what you do with Jesus is the most important decision you'll ever make. Well, and, and so, you're sharing some bad news. You're yeah, a sure. Sinner. That's right. And to, to, so to to decide whether or not. Are we going to cross that line today yeah. in in this conversation or this relationship with someone? It's it's challenging. It's scary. You just you never know what people are going to do with that information when you share it. Yeah, that's good, babe. What, what about you? What are some pressures that fight you, push you back from 
suppressing your evangelistic desire? Well, I think for me, you, and you talked about how when you, uh, in the last podcast, you went and you got that guy money that was at the um, Kroger, you left, you went somewhere else, you got money, you came back, and then you had a conversation with him and God asked you to make space to pray for him. And I think the greatest pressure for me is creating space. So I always, I have somewhere to be and I'm late a hundred percent of my life. (laughs) So because I'm already late anyway, I feel a lot of pressure to um, pressure to perform in the way that I've already agreed to perform instead of saying, okay, I know that I said I was only going to be gone for an hour. And if I have this conversation, if I step into this, this is going to take me 45 minutes. I know it's going to take 45 minutes. This person needs prayer or they're going to need something. I have to go, you know, I mean, it didn't take you 10 minutes to do that. You, right. It took 10 minutes just to go get the money and come back. Mm-hmm. Then you had a 30 minute conversation with this person. So now you've got this 45 minute endeavor. You honored God. You did exactly, it was all the right stuff, but it also costs you on the back end with the appointments or the agreements you'd already made. So I think for me, that's the hardest thing is, hey, I've got, I've got three kids with me or um, I've left three kids with somebody somewhere. <laughs> 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 I said I'd be right back and then I'm not right back. Um, and uh, so that would, that's the hardest thing for me. Yeah, I think in something that everybody says, which we all feel it, and you're, that's kind of what you're saying, but it's busyness. It's oh, busyness. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, but then, you know, it, again, some Blake was referring to, uh, maybe it's a little bit different, but rejection. Because I think with what Blake was saying applies more with relationships you have, but which I think there's a lot of evangelism that needs to be done with relationships you have. But there's a significant amount of relation, or evangelism that needs to happen with people that you're meeting in the moment, whether you're uh, inside the gas station, whether you're at Kroger, whether you, wh- whatever you might be doing. But again, that takes time. It takes a desire to not be rejected. Uh, well, yeah, and I was just going to say, like, think about the people, like, on Rivers football team. Like, okay, hey, we've got to make space for these people in our life. Like, not, now I have to make space. So that I have to I get to make yeah. space for this, this group of people, for the gospel to be elevated, which means we need to change our schedule so that they are, we invite them to dinner, which means we're not going to go do this. We're going to do, we're going to go be with these people instead. We're yeah. going to make sure that we go to the practice and we stay at the practice the whole time mm-hmm. engaged with those people instead of being on our phone or finishing that book I needed to finish or whatever. Yeah, That is the other thing. I think like, it's not just, Hey, I'm busy, but also I'm, I can change my life. I can move things around, but it costs me like, gosh, I just don't, uh, sometimes I just don't want to make room for another person in my life. Yeah. And I, that, that's what I was getting at is we don't want to make room for another person in our life. Yeah. I, I think everybody feels that. So fleshly, isn't and, it? Uh, and, but even going back to you, you referring to, you know, being at River, who's one, who's our son, like his football practice, like that's shifting the priority of your time there. You know, again, there's silly stuff, like whether you're on your phone or uh, sometimes I'd bring my golf club out there and I would chip around, uh, but instead of spending time with the other people there. But one other thing, uh, and this one's relatively new for me, um, and just to give you a, a, just kind of a peek into my life, I took all like social media off my phone. So like it was just, it was just taking more of my time and, and, and some of that stuff. So Rachel's really running that for me. But um, just, I, just to, like, I still have YouTube on my phone. So like whenever I did have like these dead periods, but YouTube, like for me, at least the content is curate, curating for me is different. Like Instagram or TikTok and stuff like that would be very silly stuff, you know, or like my buddies. Whereas YouTube, um, it is, if you, if you'll call it this, I don't know if you call it that it's, a, it's elevated the conversation to, it's more like serious stuff, like, uh, um, by serious, um, like more, if you will, like more social justice type things. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I loved my TikTok feed. I still crave my TikTok feed. It's just people falling down. Like, it's just goofy stuff, <laughs> right? Whereas now, like, it's it's these fights about Andrew Tate or toxic masculinity or politics or Ben Shapiro or Jordan Peterson or Joe Rogan. And you had these elevated things. And I do watch a lot of um, Jesus-centered stuff on there. And we know, like, the media... They will elevate, they put in your algorithm um, dissentious things because people interact more with division than they do with unity, right? So that's just part of it. Like, I, they're trying to make money. Like, I don't fault them for it. 
However, just if I can be totally transparent, as I transition into leading Faith Promise, the enemy has really been attacking me with doubt. And so like just as much um, like N.T. Wright, I'll see on there, who's an amazing theologian. I'd look him up. He's um, unbelievable. Amazing. And you can understand him, N.T. Wright, so good. But just as much N.T. Wright I'll see as I will see Islamic apologetics, or which is people who are fighting that Islam is right, or a lot of atheists or agnostic things. And I, honestly, in, in like the grand scheme, it's good, but I can feel the enemy attacking me with more doubt. And so if I if I can just be really transparent, some of the some of the times like when I'm thinking about sharing my faith and starting these conversations, sometimes it's this will I be able to have the right answers? You know, which again I know like I, if I don't have it, I can go find it and come back to the person. Um, but no, uh, you know, I'm none of us like to walk in not knowing the answer to a question someone might have. And now with things like TikTok and stuff like that people are more armed with arguments against God. Um, you know, I, I think one, you know, I saw it pop up probably a year and a half ago, this argument for homosexuality being like condonable biblically is that that word um, for homosexuality is really for pedophilia, which is absolutely untrue. It's not true at all. Um, or, But now that because of how media is, people are more armed with, uh, perspective and arguments for so either way I, I just want us all to get on the same page of it's not easy right. you know whether it's rejection whether it's business whether it's doubt whether it's selfishness whatever it is but I just want to encourage you as you're listening what is it for you I think it's important to know because if you don't know what the enemy is sucker punching you with there's a zero chance you win the fight zero mm-hmm. right zero that's what my dad would tell me whenever he would go deer hunting you, you set up your deer stand in these places where you watch the deer have been walking. Well, the, the enemy, he is not omniscient, which means he doesn't know everything. Like, I think you even, we and you were talking, he doesn't know our thoughts, right? Do we have that conversation? He doesn't know our thoughts, but he does know the patterns in which we walk. And so, and he's, he's setting consistent temptations or doubts up. But either way, so we want today, we want to talk about how we fight those pressures. We we're talking about how we do that. And we, we have a couple of specific things. And so what can we do to fight that pressure back? And the first thing we talked about, which actually, Blake, you hit a little bit in our last podcast, was to prepare your mind. Prepare your mind. I love what Craig Rochelle says. Your life moves in the direction of your strongest thoughts. What are some ways that you prepare your mind to push back that pressure and to live an evangelistic life? Well, one of the things that I do that really puts me in that mindset is I have to be aware of what lost people are dealing with. Yeah. And and so, and not just like what lost people are dealing with, I need to be aware of what Christians are doing about that situation. And And so like, for instance, how this looks for me is there's certain books that I read, like you and I have had conversations about this. I'm like, have you read this book? Mm-hmm. And you're like, I've never even heard of that. That's, right. But it's like I'm I'm reading perspectives of people who share their faith or are involved in mission work outside of the U.S. Yeah, because so much like I've come to this realization, so much of the things that we argue about and the things that we fight over are in response to how blessed we are as Americans. Like we forget yeah. how blessed it is to be like where we live. Right. And, and we fight about so many things and we argue about so many things that the issues like you're talking about when you're watching those TikTok reels of what Jordan Peterson would talk about or Joe Rogan or or some other person that's on there arguing something, right now your focus is on that thing, not on people who are going to hell. Yeah. So I have to actively put things in my path that make me think about that. Yeah. And so I, I read books about people who have, you know, won people in foreign countries. I yeah. listen to missionary podcasts. I, I love the Voice of the Martyrs mm. podcast. Yeah. I, I love hearing people's stories about how they've suffered. And it reminds me, oh my gosh, the thing that stressed me out today is actually not as big of a deal right. as what this person who believes in the same Jesus that I do, reads the same Bible stories. Somehow they have more confidence in their Christianity right. than I do as an American who I would say maybe even sometimes we think, we're more educated. We've got more resources. We have more opportunities. And so I really have to expose myself 
yeah. to what other people who are like me are doing in other places, and they're seeing fruit from it. Yeah. So, so before you jump in there, g- give us some specifics because that that's part of what we're going to talk about next. You know. Jesus says that the eye is the lamp of the body. Mm-hmm. When your eyes are good, the whole body will That's be full of gonna, light. Yeah. Okay, sorry. And so which we're huge on that. We're mm-hmm. huge on that. A, a silly one. Our kids, you if, if our kids all have like very good temperaments, but if you walked in and they had bad ones, the first question you should ask is how much screen time have they had today? Mm-hmm. Like I mean And it you, is a real thing because it's crazy. I, yeah. I literally we started having like these behavioral issues. And so I cut like We had no screen time Mm -hmm. at all. Like you couldn't even turn the TV on in our house. And it was amazing the shift that happened when what all their, all the things that they brought in was the culture of our home. Mm -hmm. So all that they saw was, was time with, with mom and dad, time with people of like the people that we spent time. It was intentional culture time. And I love that Zach has really harped on this and he talks about it in his own. He's talking about like, hey, watching these things on YouTube, but it really challenged me even social media because I like to go I, I want to know things mm-hmm. and I'll go and I'll read comments and posts of things that are uh, I know are not going to be kind which I never I'm never mean to you that's You're the, never mean that's to me. the dumbest thing <laughs> I think that in in all of our life that you do that's the craziest thing you do oh that I go and read for that people to be mean about me comments it'd be like if 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 I woke up in the morning like who hates me <laughs> who does who disagree? And I'm gonna go and find out what they say. It's, <laughs> the, it's, the, it's, it's so dumb, isn't it? Well, I'll talk to my therapist. I love about you it desperately. <laughs> Sorry, but go, going back, so give me some mm-hmm. stuff, Blake, because you, you do a great job of this. What are some just for our people? Don't mm-hmm. go what, and read comments. What are some on things? Well, that, <laughs> that, that's a great example of what not to do. Um, I know that's the clip they're going to use mm-hmm. right I there. I know. It. Um, oh. But um, so, what are some things that you are ingesting that do bolster that that zeal and that evangelistic fervor? I know you said the Voice of the Martyr podcast. Yes. Awesome. What are some other things that have pushed you lately? Well, another one for me recently too is uh, there was a sermon that. Uh, Larry Stockstill preached at the Highlands College. It was like their it was like their opening service that they had, and he preached this sermon about the necess- the the necessity of world missions and focusing on world missions again. And listening to him talk about sharing the simple gospel and listening to people respond to it like hundreds of people being born again and it just lit a fire in me again yeah. fresh to say like oh my gosh it is it's not that i need to know all these information it's not that i need to know the right answers to the arguments or the questions that these people have while that is valuable mm-hmm. that's not the end all be all the end all be all is not that their questions get answered it's that they encounter jesus yeah. in the midst of it and so when i heard that podcast like that that sermon really bolstered that. But another thing recently, too, is uh, there's a book that was written in the 90s called Jesus Freaks. Ooh. I love that book. Listen, so if you have never read that book, so beware. Good. Yeah. <laughs> because it will make you question whether or not you're a Christian in the best way. And, mm-hmm. and what I mean by that is what are you willing to do for the gospel of Jesus Christ? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Are, are, you know, it's it's easy to come to church on a Sunday. For yeah. some people, it might not be, but... But as, as Americans, yeah, like as Americans, like it's easy for us to come to church. It might be easy for us to go a group. It might be a little bit harder to serve. But when you read something like that, what people are willing to put on the line for the gospel that has transformed them, mm-hmm. you have to examine the things in your life that you call important and really put it up against that and see, would I be willing to do something similar? Because they believe the same thing that I do, yeah, but we don't have the same practices, yeah, right? That's so good. I love listening to or being around people who minister to people I feel like I could never win to the Lord or that I feel like um, – so one of the people I really enjoy listening or that are like they think different or have had a different life experience than me, um, people like Preston Sprinkle, I really love him and his um, ministry to same-sex attracted people hmm. and who have who love the Lord, who want to follow Jesus, people who have been deeply hurt by the church and his heart to see them know Jesus and walk in holiness and it's not – 
Um, and it's just, it's so grace filled and kind and truthful. Mm-hmm. So for me, one of the things that encourages me and, and really bolsters my faith in the, in the reality of the gospel is listening to people's stories mm-hmm. of how they have ministered to people who are different from me. Cause I can, I mean, like, you know, I'm your I'm middle-class mom. I can go find, sit down with some moms and, and, but if I feel like I'm going to be in a situation with somebody who's totally different than me and has had different life struggles, that might prevent me, you know, having that doubt. So listening to people who are winning people who are different from yeah, me 100%. is so encouraging. Yeah, doubt, doubt comes from living in theory and not reality for sure. Mm-hmm. So listening to people living in reality, though, that's the difference. That is what you said, like Larry Stocksdale, yeah. that man lives in reality. That's this right. missionary podcast, they are living in the reality of sharing the gospel. If you simply listen to theologians who aren't doing anything or who are just sitting there and judging others or I mean, it's great to talk about all day, but if you never sit knee to knee with another person who doesn't know Jesus, you'll never have compassion and kindness toward them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and there's two people that just on the, on that apologetic side, there's a guy that has a page uh, called red pen logic that does really well. And then they're all, they're all really kind. And then one called cross examine, you can look up on YouTube. Those guys, those guys challenged me, but one thing before we move on to the next one to prepare your mind. And this, I think goes through all of them is if you have people, because really what prepares your mind, the content and the, your content and conversations is what prepares your mind for whatever's going to be prepared for, mm-hmm. uh, for laziness, for wealth, for freedom, for evangelism, mm-hmm. content and conversations. So we talked a lot about content, but what, what about the conversations you're having? Mm-hmm. And so I want to encourage you, if you would say that you're a Christian and you would say you're surrounded with Christ followers, I want I want to encourage you to start asking this question. Hey, what life change have you seen recently? And so start asking your people who are around you that are Christians. Hey, what life change have you started to see? Re- have you seen recently? And everybody has a culture about them, like organizations, like Faith Promise. We really want to have a culture. We're trying to build a culture that's so specific that it equips people to win their world, which is like really hard to do. So like we have to be really intentional about it. But Chick-fil-A has a culture. But I would say even individuals have a culture, right? Yep. Uh, again, part of the reason that, the only, not the only reason, but part of the reason <laughs> that Blake is on here is he has a very specific culture where he pursues anointing and evangelism. We, there's 92 staff members and there's, you know, 10,000 people that call Faith Promise home, but there's only two people we invited to be on the podcast for the evangelism ones. It was Kyle Wall and Blake Conley, mm-hmm. because you've built a culture. What culture do the conversations that you have with people build for you and for them? Like, mm-hmm. are you are you the person? Are you the leadership person? Are you are you the are you the self help person? Are you the funny person? Right? Again, we talked about this last week. But are, are do your questions push people, challenge people spiritually? Not in a judgmental way where they don't want to talk to you. But in a way where you're gonna at some point have the in in one in three conversations you're gonna ask, hey, tell me about tell me about your um, tell me about like the the life change you're seeing. When I have elders meetings, which just to be if we could be vulnerable again, like I'm I'm stepping into leading faith promise, and so I sit in the elders meeting, and the elders these are all people like who've watched me grow up and stuff, and I do with them the same thing I do with the executive team, and most meetings that I lead. And at least once a month, I ask the question, whenever we hit the value of win your world, I ask, hey, has anybody had a chance to share their faith this month? And you can feel the oxygen just go out of the room because it's just, you feel it right now as I say it. (laughs) It's just, it's just the enemy is trying to rob this power from us. And so I would just say, when you prepare in your mind, you prepare your mind through your content and your conversations. What are we preparing our minds for? And then what is our, our conversation? What are they preparing other people's minds Can for? Can I add one more thing? I Please. think it should go without saying, but when you're preparing your mind, you should be in the word of God. Yes. <laughs> you want to have your, your mind totally. literally has to be transformed. And if I can just challenge you to like openly confess scripture. So That's right. if I ask you to like count to 10 right now, start counting to 10 in your head. Now say your name out loud. How far did you get when you were counting? Well, you mm. probably got to three or four. You might have gotten to six if you're going really fast, but you stopped counting to say your name out loud. I was so confused for a second. <laughs> you stop. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm getting there. So you have to stop thinking to speak. And so when you are literally trying to, when you're watching your mind be renewed by scripture, the power in that is found when you confess it. Mm-hmm. So when you are, when you speak that scripture of yourself, when you, like, you should 
you speak the great commission over yourself, the great commandment, God, you've called me to love you first and to love my neighbor as myself. And you have designed me to go out into all the world, making disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's what you called me to do. Ooh. And so if I mm-hmm. say it out loud, I'm not thinking anything else. That's right. So, and my mind is being renewed right there. And I don't want us to forget the power of God's word. It is the most powerful thing that you could speak out loud and that you could Mm -hmm. do is wash yourself in it. So content is great. You should be Mm -hmm. talking about it. But man, your time with Jesus, it should be... You know, I Zach, I asked Zach in the car today. I said, hey, tell me about your quiet time. How was your quiet time today? And I asked him, hey, and he was able to tell me, oh, I just had a great time of prayer. And here's what I was reading. And that should be, you should so be in, you can't go and talk about somebody you know if you don't know him. That's mm-hmm. right. And I just don't want us to forget in our, in our zeal to absorb content. I would rather you turn this podcast off right now and spend 10 minutes listening to the word of God. That's right. Because I have great words, but God's word, his little, it changed my life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and I just don't want us to get so absorbed in what the world has to offer us. And the, even cause it's still man. And even though it's got it blessed by the Lord, I just don't want us to forget the power of God's yeah. word and You're the right. power of being in his presence. Mm-hmm. That's good. Powerful. Now these two, these two, I, I, I would consider so my, much. I would consider myself a man of prayer. These two could pray me under the table mm-hmm. every I day, love to pray. which actually mm-hmm. funny enough, our next thing that we want to talk about is pray for opportunities. Mm-hmm. So Blake, yeah, I mean, I, again, you and I were at that prayer meeting at North and, uh, I was pacing one side of the room, and I finally opened my eyes at one point, uh, and I see Blake doing the exact same thing on the other side of the room. Um, and so I think we're kindred spirits in, in prayer. But what are some ways, and you, you've shared a little bit, you know, you mm-hmm. pray Romans 12, 1, but what are some ways you're praying for opportunities consistently in a way where it's impacting you being evangelistic and sharing your faith? Well, yeah, it's like we unpacked a little bit of that on that last podcast, like you'd mentioned, but... For me, it's I have to be willing to be available for the Lord to to speak through me to somebody that might need that. Mm-hmm. And so I uh, I have to remind myself, because whether you believe it or not, I am not naturalistically zealous. Mm-hmm. I have to I have to let God deposit that into me. Yeah, you know, because, because I'm sure you've understood this before. If you're just going off of your zeal, you will burn out very quickly. Sure. Oh, yeah. Your your passion has to come from your time in the presence of God, like you were talking about, Rachel. And so for me, it's like my focus is not so much, if I can be totally transparent, my focus is not so much, God, I need this so I can give it away. In all reality, my focus is, God, I need it because I want it. Right. I, I just want you. I want more of your peace. I want more of your presence. I want more of your power. And then what happens sort of without me thinking about it is God's presence and his power that I am filled with just naturally goes places yeah. that I don't even plan for. I don't even anticipate for. It's just kind of like the Holy Spirit knows what somebody needs, and I'll share something that I you know, received in my quiet time that morning or just some crazy revelation that I had, and I'll get super excited about it. Yeah. And they'll look at me and say, that's what I needed today. Yeah. Or th- through my time when I'm doing that or I'm praying, something will pop up in my mind. There will be a thought. There will be a scripture. Typically for me, it's scripture. It's like I don't get a uh, a thought to share with somebody. It's usually this passage of scripture. This person yeah. needs it. I send it in a text message and say, hey, I don't know what's going on in your life, but boom, I, I know. And I just I send that to them. And they're yeah. like, that is exactly today. Yeah. what I needed. And yeah. so that that's me too. Like mine for sure is scripture. Your is yours that way? Is that where you're getting like your words for people, your encouragement for people? Like I No. Yeah, t- tell us about cuz I think we're about the same. My mine's just, more in the scripture. What about you? I I'll just be praying so like one of the things the last 2 days um our our um my sister-in-law is about to have a baby. And so um, there's one of the things we're praying for, for her baby. But the last two days in particular, she is just, I've woken up with her and her children, specifically one of her children on my mind and on my heart and on my mind. So I just, I start praying for her 
and I start praying for her children and I'll text her and say, Hey, and I'll just ask God like, Hey, like there's a reason you asked me to stand in the gap for them today. And so I'll tell her, Hey, I just wanted you to know when I woke up today, God put you in my heart and here's what I'm praying over you. And I'll get a text back that says, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm so grateful for that. Here's what's going on. And so I'm just, um, I think one of the things that allows is just, I'm just talking to God as he just tells me to do stuff and I just do it. And it's not like in like the traditional, like you're on your knees, like no, 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 praying, no. like you're, you're living your life. I'm living my life. And that's the deal is I think as, um, we forget that it says as you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's right. when I'm washing dishes in the kitchen and when I'm wiping butts and mm-hmm. you know, there's, or I'm running from point A to point B, God is faithful to meet you where you are. My life isn't mine. Right. I laid my life down. I don't, it's not. So my family time, my, my appointments, all of those things, I gave all that up. And I think that if we, that's the posture that you, b- both of you walk with. And that's why when you talk about opportunity, that's why God gives you opportunity because mm-hmm. you laid your life down. Your life isn't about you anymore. Yep. And one of the reasons I think that we don't, we aren't sent. And one of the reasons that we bow to pressure is because we have bowed our knee to the world. We're bowing our knee to the idol of self. We're not bowing our knee to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Our life is still about us, our rights, our privileges. And so when you said you go to Jesus, when you go to the presence of God for more, I want more of what you have, God. I want more Mm -hmm. of you. A lot of times that's not what we're going to God for. We don't go to God because we want more of him. We go to God because I need something from you or Mm -hmm. I should. Yeah, you're right. And that That's, is not, that doesn't mm-hmm. stir in you the fire. When you talk about being in the word, I love how you articulate it, that you have like literally a fire in your bones. It's like Jeremiah. Mm-hmm. And I love that, you know, that you go. So when you read the word, there's something in you that's changed and it is because you love God and you want to be with him. Mm-hmm. So when you read his word, it's different for you. And when you, then you send it to somebody and it's out of a place of authenticity and relationship, not out of judgment or, well, I read this today and I'm supposed to share what I learned. So I shared mm-hmm. it with you, you know, like when 21, but it's like, that's the culture, just who you are. And that's different because people, even like we text people who don't know Jesus and I text them and say, hey, I just want you to know I love you today. And if I could be praying for you, if I can meet any needs you've got, would you please let me know? I'd love to serve you today. Yeah. Sometimes they let me, sometimes they don't. But I just, there's like, there is a heart posture, like our hearts, like to be pure before the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I just, it it grieves me when I think about all uh, the people of God who do not who say, I am a person of God. I love God, but we don't want to be with him Mm -hmm. and we don't want to read his word. And, um, we certainly, we're not sent because really, if we, we really did have a heart check right now, Hey, did I ever have a moment where I bowed my knee to Jesus? Not did I, do I understand intellectually that there is a God? Not do I believe that Jesus was real? Cause even the demons believe that's right. Did I bow my knee to Jesus and give him all of my rights? And that includes my schedule. That includes my fear of man. That includes how I want to be seen. And that opens up when you pray for a burden and you pray for opportunity and you pray for boldness or you pray for Bob. That's why you have, that's why you get to receive it. You don't get to receive if you're not open. Right. I just think that, that we just have a lot of our our heart posture is not. Uh, is not authentic of, of what God's asked of us. Mm-hmm. And I'm right, done. Sorry. Right there, Rachel uh, referred to Bob. Bob's not a person. There may be a person out there named Bob. It, hi, Bob. We love hi, you. Bob. <laughs> uh, but Bob is is one of the ways that my dad. I don't know where he got it. Um, so we'll give him Probably credit. Just out of himself. Uh, but Bob <laughs> stands for so burden, awesome. <laughs> opportunity, and boldness. So that really helps people when you're praying. That's how, and it's in the notes: burden, opportunity, and boldness. And something that I do, um, it, I have a couple scripture. I have a little sticky note. Uh, right, I'm, I'm actually writing a book right now. You're just going to see if, if it works. But uh, it's called Sticky Note Prayers, just on this sticky note that's really impacting my prayer life. And I pray for the lost. And, you know, I pray uh, 2 Peter 3, 9, you know, that says that God is not slow as we understand slowness, but it's His desire of the all come to repentance. So even people we've been praying for for a long time, right. um, you know, and so th- there's a couple on there, but, uh, that, that I, so Can I'll we pray put scripture. Those, we'll put those in the show notes for okay. you. Um, and then, uh, so some, something else is to plan, uh, to be a witness. Um, so this isn't something that, this isn't something that we just, you know, it, it just happens on accident. 
You know, and so Luke 10, which I'd encourage everybody to read, think again, biblically, this would really inspire people to live this out. But Luke 10, 1. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him uh, to every town and place where he was about to go. And so I think a lot of times we pray that God would go places. Um, mm-hmm. and But I really think biblically we see him do it, and then we see him finish his ministry in Matthew 28 uh, and in Acts 1 where he sent us. Everywhere that he's going to go, he has sent us. And so um, I think that we have to plan for this, but really instead just to just to end it a little bit different way um because i think we we've talked a lot about a lot of the ways that we do a lot of the practical things uh that we do but actually i'm going to have uh pastor blake i'm having him yeah. pray for us and so wherever you're at uh if you're on the treadmill if you're at your desk or whatever just in a sign of um surrender if you will and faithfulness if you just place your hands out uh, Blake's anointed, um, and I, I believe that for myself uh, whenever I'm with him. But I'm just going to ask you, Blake, to pray an anointing on people, a grace on people, a breakthrough on people uh, for them to share their faith, for them to be evangelistic, for them to fight the pressure uh, to of their well, you know, their walk to be oppressed mm-hmm. and for them to go out and do that. So would you mind, if you would, you just put your hands out if you want to receive that. And why, Pastor Blake, pray for that. I would love to. So Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we come to you and we confess that we love you and we need you. And Father, I lift up every person that is listening to this or is watching this right now. You know them, you know their situation, you know their circumstances. And right now, Father, we ask that a fire from heaven will come and fill them from the tips of their toes to the tops of their head, that they are consumed in your presence. They are able to experience and feel your heart for people who are far from you. Your word says that you are willing that none should perish, but that all should come to the knowledge of the truth. We pray Father, that people's eyes are open to see the state that they are in, that people are far from God, they are separated from a holy God, that God does not desire to destroy people, but He sent His one and only Son in the form of flesh, that He took our sin, He who knew no sin became sin so that we could become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I pray that a mantle of evangelism will come upon every person that is listening to this, that we will no longer be content with church as usual, but we want to live biblical following Jesus Christianity, to see the opportunities to share the good news of the gospel and to see that gospel enter into a person's heart and produce a harvest of 30, 60, and 100-fold of what was sown. We believe for transformation. We believe for reconciliation. We believe for power. We believe for breakthrough. We believe that people will never be the same as they step into a call of evangelism. We rebuke the enemy. We rebuke the spirit of fear. We say right now in the name of Jesus, you no longer get to tell people how they will be, how they will function. We come against dysfunction and say dysfunction no longer has permission to tell people that they can't share their faith because they're too messed up. The blood of Jesus has cleansed them of all unrighteousness, and they get to proclaim the truth and see people be set free. We love you, Jesus, and it's in your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. We love you. Your purpose is to win the world. Uh, We'll see you next week.